Sure. And welcome to Conversations with a Commissioner. Featuring tonight, we have uh, D District 1 Commissioner Carrie Warren Gully and her special guest, our Finance Director, Todd Weaver. My name is Luke Hadlestad. I am the Public Information Officer for Arapahoe County. And I'd also like to welcome you to the event and give you an idea of how it's going to go. Um, if you are on the phone and want to ask a question of one of our uh, guests, you can dial star three and that will put you through to an operator uh, who will take your question and put you in the queue. Uh, also, if you want to get your email address on one of our mailing lists for commissioner newsletters and, and event notifications and things like that, you can dial star six and that'll put you through to a different operator who will take your email address and you won't get disconnected. You'll still be able to listen in on the, on the call. So um, to give you an idea of what these are about, these are the quarterly events that we would normally love to do in person if we could, but of course right now that's not a safe bet for anyone. So we are doing them virtually. Uh, we do one with each commissioner. And uh, this, this quarter, we, the, the idea is to highlight a, a different department around the county and do a deeper dive into everything that's going on in, in their world. Uh, we will, before we get into that, we want to update you on the latest county business. We'll give you a, a very basic COVID update with, we're going to have some dial changes coming uh, this at the end of this week across the weekend. And we'll give you some basic stuff about that. We can't really answer uh, any medical, specific medical questions because we don't have any medical experts on the call, but we'll try, try to do our best to give you an idea of where the COVID uh, protocols are heading this weekend. Uh, then we'll uh, talk a little bit about a county 101 project we're working on. And then we will get in a deeper chat about finance and about Commissioner Warren Gully's first term uh, as our newest commissioner. So with that, uh, I would like to welcome Commissioner Carrie Warren Gully. Commissioner, I think you're on mute. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Don't you just love modern that's technology? A, you yeah, think a, a year that's later, a 2021. So anyway. Nobody has a favorite. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And um, we appreciate you being here. Thank you, Luke, for the introduction. As Luke mentioned, my name is Carrie Waring Gully and I'm the commissioner in District 1, which is the far western side of Arapahoe County. And joining me this evening is Todd Weaver, our finance director. And I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation with Todd and I. Um, a lot of people kind of feel like, ooh, finance, and isn't that kind of dry? I guarantee you it is not a dry conversation with Todd. So I'm looking forward to our conversation. Uh, next slide, please, Morgan. Uh, just to start off with, I wanted to kind of give you just a brief update on kind of what's going on with COVID and some of the restrictions and all of the changes that are happening here in our world right now as we move forward. As you can imagine, by having so many of us starting to get vaccinated, that really opens up so many of our opportunities and really opens up the opportunity for our economic recovery and kind of getting back together. It just feels so good to be outside in this lovely spring weather and realizing that we are progressing as we move forward with our vaccinations. So at the end of the evening on uh, Saturday, May 15th at, at midnight, we will be moving into the clear level on the dial, which pretty much lifts all restrictions on activities that are happening or have been happening over the year uh, due to COVID restrictions. And in doing that, the only thing that really stays in place is a health order, not only from Tri-County Health, but also from the state, that puts keeps in place until June 2nd or potentially beyond, depending on what happens on June 2nd, to wear our masks and facial coverings while we're in public indoor spaces. And there are some 
different parameters around that. But as you start working with uh, our public restaurants and gyms and fitness centers and all sorts of different places that we will be going in the next couple of weeks before June 2nd, you'll see that they'll have, they'll have descriptions on what needs to happen in our indoor spaces. Although when we're outside enjoying this lovely Colorado, we can uh, do that without our masks. We do want to encourage that we continue our best practices. Number one, we really encourage everybody to get the vaccine. The vaccine has, um, all three of the vaccines have been um, approved now to 16 and older. And I'm very excited to report that as of today, 56.6% of the folks that live in Arapahoe County have been vaccinated with at least a first dose, if not second. And well, I guess 44.6 have gotten the second dose. We also have found out that the Pfizer vaccine will start, they'll be able to start giving that to young people 12 to 15 years of age. Once you reach 16, you can do the Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. So that's very good news to start vaccinating even more of our younger people. And I'm very pleased to say that in our 70 and plus, some of our most vulnerable population are really seeing very successful and high rates of vaccination. So to stay up to date on all of these updates and changes that will be happening rather quickly in the next couple of weeks, I encourage you to visit the Tri-County Health Department's website at tchd.org as well as the Arapahoe County website, which has a lot of that information as well. So I think we can move on to the next one. Thank you, Morgan. What's happening in Arapahoe County right now is that we really do not have a full understanding of how the effects of this crisis are going to be unfolding for our financial house. The county has not experienced a lot of this um, because we will not see the impacts to our property taxes um, until 2022. And because uh, property taxes are the majority and primary source of our income, we won't really start seeing the impacts of COVID until then. Preliminarily, our reports are indicating that our home values have increased about 9.2%. Now that's our home values, but we also have a lot of property in Arapahoe County that is a commercial based property. And as you can imagine, we're anticipating that that growth has not happened at the same rate as our residential property values have gone up. And so that's why we're kind of looking to the future to see um, what starts happening from this, um, from the effects or the financial effects of COVID. With those considerations in mind, we have started moving into a little bit more of a strategic planning process that puts a little bit heavier restraint on um, more than normal on our activities. And we have moved into this strategic plan, which sets standards for how we're going to start making decisions, how we're going to be interacting with our public as well as our staff and actions that we might take to be a little bit more efficient and yet deliver still good exceptional service. As you can imagine, the last year has um, presented many, many challenges but I'm very proud of the fact that Arapahoe County has very quickly turned on a dime due to COVID and started providing a lot of our services online or through an appointment-based situation. So we were still able to provide a lot of our services in a very effective and efficient way for our community in spite of all the restrictions and what was going on due to COVID. So I'm very proud of, of the work of our staff and the creativity and the innovation that they used in order to do that. 
We also have some very um, specific types of financial challenges. Todd is going to be going into a little bit of that, or Todd and I will have a little bit more conversation around that after he's had some opportunity to talk to you about our budget. But I will say that realistically, the kinds of budget constraints that we're really going to be seeing in the future are due to our ongoing needs for our infrastructure, maintaining our infrastructure, and updating our infrastructure. As you know, getting outside and enjoying our outdoors during COVID was a very important part of a lot of our lives. And many of us participated in using the, the open spaces that are available here in Arapahoe County. And it has been such a pleasure to learn more about that as a new commissioner and to see how extensive our open space is over our, over the entire part of our county. I know that I use it in our district and many of you do. One of the, the highlights that we have in our district is the amazing South Platte Corridor, which starts down at Chatfield Dam and keeps going on up. And uh, we have so many partners that work with us on that. Not only the, the cities of Littleton, Inglewood and Sheridan, but many other partners Trout Unlimited, some of our stormwater partners, our conservation partners, and it is really one of the crown jewels of our open space area. And we have quite a significant part of the Highline Canal that goes through our area. So open space is important to us and it is supported by a sales tax, 0.25% sales tax, and that supports our ability to have that open space, not only to gain more open space and trails, but to maintain those. So we are currently having a conversation with our community, our staff, and among the county commissioners to see if we can continue to have that support from our community. Just so you know, next Thursday, Commissioner Bill Holen will be, will be having a similar type of, of um, conversation with Shannon Carter, and Shannon heads up our open space program for Arapahoe County. And um, so that will be a very valuable conversation if you have the opportunity next Thursday. One of the most exciting parts of some of our restrictions being lifted in Arapahoe County is that we are going to have our county fair in person, which is wonderful news. The dates are July 22nd through the 25th, and we'll be sharing the lineup of everything that's going to be happening during the county fair over the next few weeks. We also have been receiving, we don't know quite yet the amount, but we will be receiving funds through the American Rescue Act that was passed at the federal level. And I'm hoping that Todd will also touch on that and we can start a little bit of a conversation around that as we start thinking about how we might, spending, might be spending those funds. So I'm gonna hand it off next to Luke to go back and cover some other county topics. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, just to remind everybody, we, um, if, you wanna, if you're on the phone and want to ask a question, uh, you can dial star three and you'll be put through to an operator and put into the queue. If, you want to, uh, if you're watching us on our YouTube channel or Facebook page, or actually not on the YouTube channel, but on the Facebook page or the, our website, you can put a, a question into the comments section and we will try to get to that. Um, before I get into County 101, we would like to ask those of you on the phone to respond to the a polling question. We have two of these tonight. And this first one is, uh, we're going to ask, uh, on a scale of one to five, how likely are you to recommend living in the county to someone else? Press one if you're very likely to recommend it. Press two if you're somewhat likely. Press three if you're neutral. Press four if you're somewhat unlikely. And press five if you're very unlikely. Uh, once again, on a scale of one to five, how, are, how likely are you to recommend living in the county to someone else? One, if you're very likely, 
two is somewhat likely, three is neutral, four is unlikely, and five is very unlikely. This is usually a pretty pro Arapahoe question, as you might imagine. Um, and speaking of that, uh, one of the things I'd like to tell you a little bit about is County 101. So what that is, is a, an ongoing project that we've set up because we've our, our communications team realized that a lot of people, including people that work for the county and, and some of us in, who are relatively new to communications for the county, don't always know exactly what the county does or does not do. So to give you the example I always use is um, when Public Works has a road project in the uh, between around the uh, fairgrounds, so like Eastern Aurora, Gun Club, uh, Quincy, that area, often uh, these projects will involve multiple jurisdictions. So because the, the intersection or the roadway or whatever crosses through Aurora, it crosses through unincorporated Arapahoe, it might cross through another community. And so um, that, that's just sort of a snapshot of, of the, the many ways that, that county government can be confusing. Um, so what we did and what we're trying to do, and, and that's one of the themes of this month's round of conversations, is to sort of make it, get, make it a little clearer for everybody what we do and what we don't do so that you know where to go for services to get your questions answered. Um, having said that, if you do have questions, you're always welcome to email or call us and we will point you to the right people. Um, but it just might not be us. It might be the town that you live in. It might be the state. It might be the federal government. So that's kind of the idea there. Um, to give you sort of a basic overview of what county governments do generally, um, the Commissioner Jackson always likes to say that the, the state makes the sausage and the counties serve it. So we act as agents of the state. Uh, we collect taxes. Um, we assess properties. We uh, distribute and, and record licenses for things like for drivers, for marriages, things like that. Of course, we hold elections. Um, that That's something that a lot of people probably came to realize in the last year. And we also have elected officials in addition to the commissioners that include the sheriff, the coroner, the treasurer, the assessor, and the county clerk and recorder. Um, you know, and so obviously we, most people know what police do. And uh, you know, there's a there's a variety of services that that we provide uh, on behalf of the rest of the residents of the area. So, um, what we try to do is, like I said, clarify things as much as possible, um, and give give uh, our residents as much information uh, uh, as we can about the services that they have questions about. Um, the one thing that people are also less aware about is that we do collect property taxes, as the commissioner mentioned, we, they are a primary source of our revenue. Um, however, we also take a lot of that money and send it right back out again, because we share it with special districts, with other communities, um, and that kind of thing. Todd can get into more of the, the nitty gritty about that. But, um, you know, the, 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 collect, the taxes we do collect don't always, uh, you know, go into our pockets and, and certainly are, are, you know, they help pay for our services, but they don't cover everything. So. Um, the idea uh, of these county conversations uh, is to uh, drill down a little deeper with uh, the various departments that, that are most relevant to your daily life. So tonight we have finance, as the commissioner mentioned. Uh, next week, uh, Commissioner Holland is going to talk to Shannon Carter of Open Spaces. A week after that, Commissioner Baker will be talking to the Public Works Director, Brian Weimer. And then last week, uh, Commissioners Jackson and Sharp talked to our Human Services and Community Resources Departments. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, we record all these events. So if, if you can't make one or you missed something and you want to go back to it, like we put a phone number up and you didn't catch it or whatever, you can go to our YouTube page anytime within about 24 hours after the event happens and watch it again, fast forward through it, you know, get to the point to the information you want. And hopefully that'll help clear up uh, over time, you know, a lot of the confusion that's out there about what we do. So that's County 101 in a nutshell. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Commissioner Warren Gully again, and she will introduce Todd Weaver. Thank you, Luke. So it is my pleasure to introduce Todd Weaver. Um, Todd has taught me so much about our budget and we have had a great working relationship in getting going here. I will admit that um, Todd and I also got to work when, together when I was on the school board. And whenever I really needed to have a good understanding of some of the issues around taxation and such, I would give him a call and uh, his students 
I, I hate to, I hope I'm not revealing too much, Todd, but his students are proud, or I'm proud of the fact that his, his children are in Littleton Public Schools. And so we've gotten to talk about that and, and share experiences. So thank you so much, Todd, for being here for this. And I'm gonna let, hand it over to you. And then I'm hoping that we have some questions from folks in the audience, or if not, I have some conversational questions for you too. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight. I know sometimes if you see the word finance on a, on a display or on a presentation, you probably shy away. Uh, but I can assure you that we'll try to make it as entertaining and informative as we can. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight a little bit is, is the finance department itself and, and kind of give you a little background on, on what it is we do for Arapahoe County. Uh, we're kind of the folks behind the curtain that hopefully make everything that the county does uh, and the programs that we provide uh, run a lot smoother and, and provide some of that financial uh, payroll purchasing technical support that folks like Public Works, the Sheriff's Office, our Human Services Department can take advantage of to make their lives easier and make the provision of services to, to you as citizens much, uh, much more efficient. So what does the finance department do? Uh, quite simply, uh, some of the things you're probably very familiar with from uh, any type of other financial activity at where you may work or, or inter interacting with other businesses. We have accountants that do all the accounting and financial reporting on an annual basis. Our annual financial reports are available on the website if you wanna check out the financial condition of Arapahoe County or look up some interesting facts about uh, how we receive our money and how we spend our money. Uh, accounts payable, we have folks that, that uh, it's a centralized, it's a decentralized function at Arapahoe County. A lot of our departments and offices will be the ones who input the actual invoice for payment. We have a few folks in our finance department that review all those payments, uh, check them for their accuracy and other details, and then issue those payments on a uh, twice weekly basis. Uh, we have payroll folks, 2,300 uh, full-time equivalent positions at Arapahoe County. Uh, we process pay, uh, payroll on a biweekly uh, rate for all 2,300 of those employees, uh, 26 pay periods a year. So we have two payroll folks that work very hard to make sure everybody in the county gets paid. There's nothing more personal than your individual paycheck. Uh, budget division takes care of uh, preparing the annual budget for the county. We also do quarterly fiscal updates with the county commissioners uh, that are in public study sessions that kind of go over the financial status of the major funds of the county give the commissioners idea of how revenue is being collected year to date, how we're spending it year to date. And then we also look ahead five years into the future uh, with our crystal ball, which sometimes is, is foggier than others. I don't think anybody projected a global pandemic on the horizon for 2020. Uh, so we had to adjust. And those projections adjust with the economic information that we received from state economists. The Legislative Council puts out a, a quarterly economic forecast that we'll look at very closely. And we take a look at where we think the economy is going. We take a look at trends and revenues and expenditures. And we try to provide the commissioners a viewpoint on where we think we'll be at the end of any given fiscal year, 2021, and then looking ahead that five years to 2025 and 2026. Uh, we also have a division within finance that is purchasing. Uh, they help with the procurement needs of all the departments and offices. Uh, we have policies that can conform with the best practices in governmental purchasing. We're always looking for that best value for Arapa County. In many cases, um, cost is a considerable factor, but the county kind of subscribes to that best value, which is it's a combination of getting the most out of every taxpayer dollar that we have. So when, when quality is more important than cost, uh, we have to look at what that best value is. Uh, but when cost is more important and you're buying a commodity, obviously uh, watching our dollars and trying to get that dollar and stretch it into a dollar 50 is an expression we use a lot in finance. Uh, is is key. And then last but certainly not least, we have some uh, folks in our finance department that are functional experts in financial transactions and processes within our financial system. Our IT department within the county does a great job of providing the network and helping getting the software up and running. But the day-to-day -day processes for payroll, purchasing, budgeting, accounting, all the transactions that are the backbone of a financial uh, operation, including at, 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 in the departments and offices at Arapahoe County, we have some folks in finance that help us make sure all those transactions are streamlined, they troubleshoot, uh, and we try to find ways to, to make those processes more automated and user-friendly. So once again, trying to make that dollar into a dollar fifty. So that's a, a very brief overview 
of the, the 30 or so folks that work in our Arapahoe County Finance Department. Proud of all of them. They do a great job. As I said, we've we've been at 30 uh, folks in our finance department for quite some time. So we're using that automation. We're using technology. We're trying to be more efficient and get more out of, out of our folks and out of our, um, our resources as we can. Uh, next slide, please. So as Commissioner Warren Gully and, and uh, Luke alluded to, uh, I was going to talk a little bit tonight about, about the county finances. What, what are some of our challenges? What are some of our priorities? How does this all fit together? How is a county funded that's a little bit different than what you may be familiar with with the city you live in? Uh, so I'll go through some of that. Some of that we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail than, than the commissioner and Luke were able to do. Uh, so we'll just kind of run through that. And then I'll talk a little bit about what we're looking at going forward, how, how we're trying to change the, the strategic direction of the county um, and try to get, once again, turn that dollar into a dollar fifty. That, that's what you'd expect of us as a local government. That's what we're trying to do. But let's talk a little bit about um, where we get our money, where we spend our money, why that makes it a little bit more challenging for us as a county. Uh, and what we're trying to do to, to solve some of those problems. Uh, as the commissioner uh, said earlier, the county is primarily property tax funded. As Luke mentioned, uh, we collect over $1.2 billion in property taxes uh, in 2021, or will collect in 2021, that's what was levied. Of that $1.2 billion, the county only keeps about 160 million, or about 13% of that overall total. The rest is distributed to school districts, Special districts, those include, uh, could be a metro district that um, you may live in, uh, your subdivision, could be a water district that serves your community, could be a fire district, library district, parks and rec district. Uh, you're probably familiar with the ones that, that are where you are. Uh, most of that money goes to them. Another, uh, the largest portion of that property tax goes to school districts, obviously. Uh, Cherry Creek, Littleton Public Schools, Inglewood, uh, Sheridan Public Schools. Uh, and then another smaller portion goes to cities. Uh, when you compare Arapahoe County to a city, we are primarily property tax funded. Over 50% of our $420 million in, in annual revenue budgeted for 2021 is going to come from taxes, both the property tax and the sales and use tax. Um, the open space sales and use tax can only be used for the, the development and conservation of open space. And a lot of that sales and use tax is immediately shared back with our municipalities and our, our parks and rec partners through grants and through a share back program. The rest of it is property tax. Uh, that property tax funding is limited for us by constitutional revenue limitation, limitations. Excuse me. Um, the, the two primary ones that the counties had to deal with over the years are the Taxpayer Bill of Rights and the Gallagher Amendment. Uh, the recent uh, year ago ballot question kind of alleviated some of the, the concern with the Gallagher Amendment. Uh, the issue there is, as, as, as you may or may not be aware, as the different classes of property grow at different rates, uh, it changes that residential assessment rate uh, and reduces uh, the percentage at which a residential property is assessed. Well, as a homeowner, uh, I don't have any problem with paying less tax. Uh, when I come to work every morning, I have to worry about how we fund those programs and services that our citizens rely on uh, with revenue that's not growing as fast as the, the market and the tax base as a whole. So. One of the things I would, I would I usually point out to, to citizens when we get questions about property taxes is well, what did Gallagher, what does Tabor do to, um, to your property tax revenue over time? To give you an example, I, I sometimes pull sample properties for, for different parts of the county. And in many cases, what you'll see over the past 20 years is that a, a home may have increased in value between 150 and 200% over two decades. That's uh, that's a pretty decent increase. Uh, Colorado has a high quality of life and it's a desirable place to live. So our property values continue to grow. Uh, but when you apply Tabor and Gallagher to the tax rate uh, that the county has to levy to fund its programs and services, in some cases, that same property, uh, the increase in the county property tax may have only increased 40% over that 20 year period, uh, not anywhere close to the increase in the value. So those both work to constrain the growth in revenue. Uh, a lot of our other revenue, uh, another 30% of our revenue comes from intergovernmental revenue. That's revenue that we receive from the state and federal government. Uh, as, as Luke pointed out, we are agents of the state. We provide a lot of services and programs on behalf of the state, and we receive money from them to do that. So we're really not in control of that revenue. That's up to those other levels of government to appropriately fund those programs and services. So the two big parts of, of our revenue uh, base are property taxes and revenue that we receive from other le levels of government. 
So as that revenue is constrained over time, uh, it does grow as the property tax base grows, regardless of, of Tabor and Gallagher or other constraints from other levels of government, our revenue has grown over time. And as I said, in 2021, our, our revenue is $420 million. Um, on the flip side of that coin is our expense side. Uh, we are about 50% of our budget goes to salaries and benefits. We are a service provider as a county. So our staff are our most, most valuable asset, whether that be the social case workers in our human service department, our deputies in our sheriff's office, uh, folks processing payroll and finance, community resources, all the different uh, clerk and recorder's office, the folks that'll help you uh, get your motor vehicle licensed and registered. Uh, that's what we do. We provide service to the community. So uh, salaries increase over time, benefits, um, labor that we hire that, uh, for services that we don't provide ourselves, materials, the cost of equipment, vehicles, construction equipment, all that is increasing at a faster rate than our revenue. So that creates the challenge of, for the commissioners and for us uh, in the uh, staff is, how do we continuously find ways to put um, eight, eight pounds of potatoes in the five pound bag? So it requires us at the county to become more efficient, uh, find new ways to do things, leverage technology, leverage partnerships with local governments uh, and other counties in the state of Colorado and the federal government to find ways to provide those services to citizens and try to fit that that eight pounds into that into that bag. Um, as I said, one of the things we didn't anticipate when doing our five-year forecast was a global pandemic uh, that resulted in, in, in an economic shutdown for a period of months. Uh, we've ended up after 2020 weathering the pandemic quite well. Uh, there have been some downturns in revenue, but uh, what we saw was uh, retail sales in restaurants and, and some of the service industries drop off, especially hospitality and accommodation. Uh, but folks bought a lot more online. Um, they looked around their house and decided they need, needed a new TV or decided they wanted to remodel their basement. Uh, so sales tax kind of held steady for the county. Uh, and as Commissioner Warren Billy said, uh, because of the look back period for property tax, we're not quite sure what the total impact of the, of the downturn in the economy as a result of the pandemic will have on Arapahoe County's revenue base. When we get to the next assessment period in 2023, that'll be looking back at a sizable chunk of, of when this economic um, turmoil was happening. And that's when we may see the economic impact on our revenues of the pandemic from property tax. So once again, looking ahead in our projections, we've given the commissioners a heads up that we may see a flattening or a downturn in, in our major revenue source of property tax. And we're already starting to think about how we can plan and develop a contingency for keeping those vital programs and services going. Uh, through through what might be a downturn in our revenue. One of the things we have a challenge with over the years is as we figure out ways to keep our programs and services funded with our, our limited revenue streams or limited growth in our revenue streams, you always have to make those choices of what's most important. Uh, and stretching that dollar into a dollar fifty sometimes doesn't always mean that you can get to the two dollars that you need. So the county has got a backlog of deferred infrastructure and facility maintenance that we're trying to address in, in unique ways going forward. Uh, and so we'll hopefully be coming up with some new and innovative ways to, to take that $1.50 and maybe stretch it to $1.75. As, as Commissioner said, uh, there is a new strategic plan and direction for the county. We're going to be looking at, at ways to tighten our belt even tighter, tighten, or tighter than it has been in the past. Uh, we're looking at uh, new ways to maybe not fill positions as quickly uh, as we have in the past? Is there a way, better way to do things? Can we leverage more technology and online services uh, that may be a more efficient and inexpensive way to provide some of those services as opposed to um, uh, coming in and, and having somebody uh, deal, with, uh, deal with the situation in person? Um, one of the things I would, I would like to, to point out, going back to the property tax thing, um, I think right about now, a lot of people are getting the notices of value from the assessor's office in their mailbox and seeing the changing values in their house and, and seeing what that does to their tax bill. Uh, I, think, I think one of the things we wanna stress is we've, we've talked about efficiency. I think Arapahoe County takes a lot of pride in, in how, how efficient we've been in administering the, the money that we get from, uh, from property taxes, not only from residential homes, but also com commercial properties. When you look, across the metro area, Arapahoe County's uh, tax levy for county services is about 12 mils. Uh, when you look at any of our neighboring counties, we're a third to a half less uh, than their property tax rate for the, those counties. And so we take a lot of pride in, in trying to do as much as we can 
uh, with the resources that, that the taxpayers provide us. Uh, so with that, that's kind of a, a 30,000 foot look at some of the financial challenges that we see uh, looming ahead and sort of how we're planning on dealing with some of that. I, I think at this point, Luke, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you and, and maybe we can start the conversation and, and have some questions. Excellent. Thank you, Todd. Um, and just to piggyback on the, uh, the, the thing about uh, getting your tax bill in the mail, um, I, everybody should be aware that uh, of two things. One is that May uh, is when you, the month of May is when you, you can uh, protest with our assessor's office if you feel that your valuation is inaccurate for any reason. And uh, so definitely look over your tax bill and make sure that uh, you know, it, it seems right to you. Uh, the other th uh, thing on those bills that I want to point out is that we are one of the, I believe, only two counties in Colorado that has put a QR code on the bill. So it makes it a lot easier to access your records. You just scan it with your uh, smartphone and you can you can get into your data a lot quicker and, and uh, you know, and easier online. So uh, before we get into the discussion, I want to read the results of the first poll question, which was on a scale of one to five, how likely are you to recommend living in the county to someone else? 48% of you said very likely, 17 said somewhat likely, 17%. 19% said you're neutral, 5% said you're somewhat unlikely, and 11% said you're very unlikely. Uh, and let me uh, now ask our second polling question, which is, sorry, my cat is freaking out over here. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a common occurrence these days. Uh, we'll, uh, so how satisfied with are you with about your interactions with the Arapahoe County government? So uh, press one if you've been very satisfied. Press two if you're somewhat satisfied. Press three if you're neutral or it's not applicable because you haven't had many interactions with us. Press four if you're somewhat dissatisfied and press five if you're very dissatisfied. Once again, how satisfied are you about your interactions with the Arapahoe County government? Press one if you're very satisfied. Two, if you're somewhat satisfied. Three, if you're neutral or it's not applicable. Four, if you're somewhat dissatisfied. And five, if you've been very dissatisfied. Uh, we'll read those results again uh, or toward the end of the call. Um, as we get into our discussion here, I wanna start with the commissioner. Um, I wanna ask you, uh, at the beginning of every year, so every term for the commissioners, um, you, everybody gets assigned their liaison to uh, one or more departments. Uh, you obviously have been assigned to Todd's finance department, among others. Um, how does that process work? And is it something where you request it or they give it to you? And I, I would think that given that it is your first term as commissioner, it was probably a really valuable alliance to have right out of the gate so you could learn as much as possible about you know where the county's money goes. Right, yes. So um, it, Typically, I think with um, the commissioners, when we sit down and talk about what committees we're going to be assigned to and what departments we're going to be the liaison to or overseeing, it, it's, it's kind of a discussion between the commissioners and, and um, they can choose preferences and that type of thing. I did have a conversation with many of the commissioners to talk about, since I was new, what would be the most appropriate department and where is some of the um, more long, uh, people who've been in their position for a longer period of time or in the department for a longer period of time that could really help me understand not only their department, but the operations of the whole county. So I got the two best departments, I think, and that's finance and HR. And I really wanted those two departments and I was glad that I was assigned to them because number one, I feel that if you have an understanding of your budget, you understand the functions, the values of your community because you kind of put your money where your mouth is. So if what you determine is of value or of high priority, then that is reflected in your, in your budget. And you also, when I was assigned to the human resource department, that was also very good for me because it gave me a feel for what are all of the different employee groups? How does our staff work together? How do they interact with our community? And um, 
to really get a good understanding of where our largest apartments all the way down to some of our smallest apartments are. So it's given me a very good, broad understanding of the district as a whole. And I will say that uh, when I first met with Todd, one of our very first meetings, the first thing he said to me was, always look at the finance department as a service department. They are there to serve all of the staff and all of the departments of our county. And I have found that to be very true of the finance department. As, as Todd said, one of the most personal things that you have is to make sure that you're getting paid in a regular way and on a regular basis and on, on a specific day so that you can take care of your own personal finances. And um, so that happens every two weeks. And that is something that is a, an incredible support service. But they also provide a lot of support to other departments in order to make sure that they're functioning within the budgets of those departments. So that is something that I really took to heart that Todd told me from the beginning was, is that they are considered a service department. The other thing that Todd and his staff and team bring forward to the Board of County Commissioners and to me as the liaison is a broader, more long-term conversation about what is going to be happening down the road. So they try to help us understand how we can predict what our budget might be. And not only that, but what would be some of our expenses? Do we have large expenses that are coming up that we need to address? How do we plan for just those incremental increases in our benefits, in our pay structure and that type of thing. So that is something that's very important, I think, for the county and for the Board of Commissioners is to really look at that long term thinking and how we plan for that. So I would say those are the two main points that have been a huge support to me and a huge help coming on board as a first time county commissioner. And I can, as a as an employee, first of all, I like getting paid uh, regularly every two weeks. So I appreciate that. Um, but also, um, you know, there's there's so many rules to government and contracting and things like that. So, uh, you know, many of you have probably seen our Keep It Up campaign about uh, anti-COVID best practices. And you know, to get the agency installed to do that, we had to go through a very you know regimented procedure, and and we couldn't have done that without finance and 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 you know signing off on everything and making sure we were doing it correctly and so forth. And we've been very pleased with how that worked out. Um, I want to go back to something Todd said in his presentation about the 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 sort of delayed effect of of the COVID financial impact. And um, I just learned this myself within the last few weeks, but the assessor cutoff date for property tax assessments goes through June 30th every year. So what, what that means is that we are currently assessing our property rates based on basically March to June th through June of last year with, you know, that's the COVID part, but then the, the coming year will be July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. And then we won't see that impact until the following year because the assessments happen every other year. Did I describe that correctly, Todd? Yeah, so you're absolutely correct. So the, the, the notices of value that are going out now that are appraising property, are the, the cutoff period for evaluating the, the, the property uh, ended on June 30th of 2020. So when you think about the pandemic, it really got rolling in, in March, as you said. But a lot of that, a lot of the sales data and a lot of the value uh, that, that will be used for that assessment happened prior to March 2020. So when we think about what will, may happen to commercial property in Colorado and in Arapahoe County specifically is what we're concerned about. Um, we're really looking to see what will happen at the in this next assessment cycle that will capture from June, you know, July 1st, 2020 on. That's where that's where that impact's going to be felt. And and the economy could be changing, you know, um, retail and office space, and it may not be as valuable as people uh, work from home or shop online. So uh, it'll take some time to, to see where commercial property values go, but we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Well, Todd, the other thing too that, sorry to interrupt Luke, um, the other thing that I think it's important to remember about commercial property is, 
is that a higher percentage of the property tax collected is on the commercial side of things versus the residential side of things. And that again is, is kind of that um, that was started by Gallagher and the percentages that were set forward by that. But then um, the, the ballot initiative that passed last year really solidified those tax rates at, um, gosh, I used to remember have these memorized, but I think commercials at 29%, is that right? That's correct. And yep. residential is at like 7.2%. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, so commercial value brings in a bigger percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, when you think about that 29% versus 7%, it's essentially four times as valuable as a residential property. So when you think about $100,000 or a million dollars worth of commercial property, think about how many houses uh, that takes at, at four times that. So it's about $4 million in residential property compared to a million dollars in commercial property. So that, that's really the core of, of the tax base for the county is that non-residential property. And if those values go down, then that is why we will feel one of the largest effects is by that property value going down because the percentage is higher. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we have an online question here that relates to this. Um, this is for Todd uh, and, and the commissioner. Um, to what extent do you interact with your fellow finance people in other counties and mm -hmm. how does the county keep costs low compared to what other counties are? Um, yeah, we, I, I communicate quite frequently with, with my colleagues at other counties. I, I think one of the important things to think about when, when you think about um, whether it be Douglas or Adams or Jefferson, the counties that, that border us, um, different revenue streams, different uh, tax rates, and then they have, they have different communities that may have different needs. But there are a lot of times where, um, you, know, uh, you know, plagiarism is this serious form of flattery, right? So I think we share ideas, and when they have ideas that we think may work in Arapahoe County, we're always happy to, uh, to see if we can make those work and, and vice versa. So I, I think it's, it's one of those things, you know, an ex example of that partnership is uh, Arapahoe Douglas Works, where we, there's a the job training programs and the workforce improvement center are shared between uh, Arapahoe and Douglas counties and uh, the tri county health departments another example where we have uh, cooperation and collaboration among the three counties to provide that that health department and and hopefully maximize on economies of scale when providing those services so uh, i think uh, cross county cooperation and we also cooperate a lot with municipalities the the cares act was a perfect example of that trying to uh, maximize the the talent and the brain power in Arapahoe County to, to make sure that that money was put to the best use. And uh, along those lines, um, the open space tax that we discussed earlier, uh, do the sit do cities get that within the county, or is it certain programs or, or districts within the cities? So yeah, the, there's a there's a fifty percent share back with municipalities. So if, if, if in a recent year the, the county collected thirty million dollars in sales and use tax, so fifteen million auto, just automatically off the top goes right back to municipalities. And then we also have a grant program within that open space sales tax uh, that provides another twelve percent of the overall collected sales and use tax that is shared not only with municipalities but also with other special districts, like park and rec districts. Um, to help them finance projects, whether it be improvements to parks or improvements to trails. Um, so yeah, 62% of that of that sales and use tax goes to someplace other than Arapahoe County. I mean, it's within Arapahoe County. It's just not retained by the county itself where we're sharing that with our other municipal and special district partners. Yeah, I think that's a perfect example of some different partnerships that are going on. And I mentioned earlier on in some of my comments in our district, in district one, um, that South Platte uh, working group is made up of many different partners, uh, six, gosh, I want to say six or seven partners that are a part of that, not only the county, but municipalities, nonprofits, other government entities that
that are working together and everybody's pitching in a little bit to make improvements along that waterway. Not only improvements so that we can enjoy it through our biking and hiking and fishing and that type of thing, but improvements to the water quality, improvements to our stormwater um, discharge and that type of thing. So it's those partnerships is something that I would say that probably Arapahoe County does very, very well when I hear about other counties that act very independently. But our open space is just an example of that partnership. As Todd mentioned, our CARES Act dollars that came in, they came into the county and the county immediately shared much of uh, a lot of that money with our municipalities. So the cities were able to figure out how to get that money even closer and more local to the businesses and community members that were specific to their cities as well as the county. So um, as he mentioned, Tri-County Health, the Arapahoe Douglas Works Workforce Center, those are all programs in which we do a lot of partnerships. What I would say to the question that was asked earlier about comparing and working with other counties and learning from other counties or how we might be a little bit different. I think Todd mentioned this briefly, but the Arapahoe County does have some constraints on it, on our budget that other, other counties don't. There are 64 counties in the state of Colorado and Todd, will you correct me? Um, I want to say there's four or five other counties that still have constitutional constraints on our budget due to the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. And that means that other counties have been able to take advantage of some of the, when, it, when the economy goes up, they're able to take advantage of some of that um, growth in the economy that Arapahoe County was not able to due to these constitutional constraints. And um, so those, those, those constraints make us a little bit different than other counties and the types of things and the types of opportunities that those counties may be able to provide to their communities. So those are the types of things that Todd and his staff bring forward to us on a day, on a, on a, very regular basis to help us keep within those constraints and make sure that we're thinking long term about how we want to plan for the county. Yeah, Is there any uh, yeah clarification? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I just want to jump in there quick. Um, yeah, what, what she's referring to is 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 the constraint on our property tax revenue. That's our largest source of revenue. And just to give you an idea of how it works, if you're under the constraints of Tabor or you're not, uh, for those counties who have exempted themselves from Tabor for the collection of their property tax, if their property values go up, as the commissioner said earlier, 9%, uh, their property tax revenue goes up 9%. Uh, for us at Arapahoe County, uh, under the constraints of Tabor, our growth in our property tax revenue is limited to the rate of inflation plus the rate of new construction within Arapahoe County which on average over the past uh, three years is about 3%. So as you see that value on uh, your home or your business go up 10 or 11%, if you're in a county that's that's not under Tabor, that's what their revenue will do, it'll go up 10%. For us, it's only gonna go up by that inflation and new construction. So it, it goes up at a much lower rate depending on those two factors. And that's just something we have to account for and, and um, plan a con you know contingent, plan a contingency for so that we, we, have, we can't allow our costs to outstrip our revenue growth. That's just not, that's not how we want to balance the budget at Arapahoe County. So um, speaking of contingencies, uh, we have an online question here from Terry, who is asking, uh, she's, she's saying, my family has been concerned about health services being defunded, particularly uh, mental health services. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, number Part question one: Is there any of our any of the county's tax money being used to address these issues? And two, this was something that came up with the CARES Act last year, and now we'll you know we're going to get another influx of funds from the federal government with ARPA, which is the new federal relief program. Uh, can we talk in it at all? I mean, I know we will be spending money on these things. I know we don't know how much yet, but can you talk a little bit about 
how this uh, the, the current financial situation affects these services? So Todd, why don't I start with this? And, and I'm just going to kind of give kind of a broad overview of, of our feel around that. And then I'm gonna let Todd speak a little bit more specifically about that. Um, I will say that my, my year last year of campaigning and, and meeting with people and talking with constituents around goals and needs and um, priorities in their lives, mental health was absolutely on top of the list. I will say that um, we still have a long ways to go in the state of Colorado. And what, as was mentioned earlier in our conversation, much of um, that type of funding for mental health or healthcare in general does come from the state. And then we are able to utilize that funding to provide services. There are partners in our community, the Aurora Mental Health Community and um, All Health Community Health Services are two of our mental health care providers out that, that are, are um, set up to support families and even families and individuals that do not have uh, the benefit of health insurance. So the funding that comes down for mental health comes from the state. We do have a program in Arapahoe County in which we do have some funding that goes forward in our aid to agencies programming that does provide some additional support to um, our, our mental health community partners, as well as some of our mental health programs that are supported through the justice system, uh, through our courthouse, and through the detention center. So we do have those programs in place. What I hope, and I think there is a value in our state right now of really trying to address the mental health community and the mental health needs in our, in our community. COVID has really highlighted that. And my hope is, is that at, especially at the federal level, they recognize this. They can help with some funding to the state level and that that will be passed on down through the county and um, to our community partners. So that's kind of the overall conversation, but I will tell you that there is, we are putting a lot of pressure on our legislators, both at the federal and state level to talk about how important this is one of the things that I would really hope for in some of the uh, American Rescue Act money that's going to be coming to us that Todd can address a little bit more specifically is to see if we can be a little bit innovative and creative about some of those programs over the, the, over the course of the next two to three years as we have that funding available. And then we can see what those best practices are what some of those programs are and, and if they're successful, how we might carry them forward and utilize them in the future. But I'll hand it off to you, Todd, if you have other stuff on top of that. Yeah, thank you. I, I think the commissioner did an excellent job of, of, of a synopsis of where that funding comes from and, and, and how the county commissioners view the importance of that issue. Uh, to speak a little bit more about what's happened over the past year, as, as you all probably well aware, the county received a, a amounts from the federal government for the CARES Act. And as part of the programs that we implemented uh, last year to help um, the community get through the pandemic, uh, about $700,000 was given out to a, a lot of those mental health organizations or, or nonprofits that, that assist um, assist that community. So uh, we were proud to be able to, to help them transition from um, providing those services in, in, a, in a clinical environment where um, the building may have not been accessible due to public health orders or in-person visits were more difficult. Uh, some of that funding for those organizations was used to uh, bring in that, that uh, remote clinical um, technology so they could, they could still continue to provide those services under the conditions. And as Commissioner Warren Gulley said, we're looking at uh, Arapahoe County receiving the estimates show around $127 million for the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, and, and mental health. Um, there's a wide range of uses of that funding. 
a pandemic response, economic recovery. But in, in those categories, uh, mental health is one of the areas that we can uh, we can use that funding to address. And unlike the CARES Act that we received in 2020, that had a very uh, short time frame of about a year, they did extend it an additional year at the very end. Uh, the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, we can use that money through 2024. Uh, and if not longer, there's an, uh, actually an add on two years. If you if the money's already been obligated by the end of 2024, you can spend it through the end of 2026. So it opens up a, a, a wide range of possibilities for the commissioners in the county to get more involved in some of those areas. Yeah, and I would just to add to that, um, we're halfway through uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. So this, this is a time you know, to keep your antennas up about uh, things that are happening around you. Uh, just, you know, you're going to see a lot more uh, referrals to resources and things like that. So we encourage everyone to follow along. Uh, our social media feeds have a lot of information about that. So um, we have gobbled up a whole hour quite quickly. Uh, before I let you all go, let me read the results of the last poll question. How satisfied are you about your interactions with the Arapahoe County government? 29% are ver have been very satisfied, 15% somewhat satisfied, 39% neutral or not applicable, 12% somewhat dissatisfied, and 5% very dissatisfied. We will do our best to move that 17% north as far as we can uh, in the coming weeks and years and months. So I just wanna thank everybody uh, once again for joining us tonight. Thank you to Commissioner Warren Gully and to Todd Weaver. Uh, reminder that you can watch this again if you missed anything. Uh, it'll be posted on our YouTube channel within about 24 hours. And then we also have two more coming up uh, next week and the week after with uh, Bill Holden and the Open Spaces Director, Shannon Carter, and then Commissioner Jeff Baker and the PWD Director, Brian Weimer. Once again, thank you so much.